Hello, everybody, and welcome to HardAssetsInvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host. My guest today is Erica Ronestad. She is a commodity analyst with CPM Group. Erica, thanks very much for coming on the show. It's a pleasure. Now, I know you focus on precious metals and platinum group metals, so why don't we start off there. Uh, let's talk about gold uh, and what your outlook is for gold. Okay, well, right now what we're seeing is a huge reduction in investor interest in gold. Um, Fundamentally, uh, the gold market is pretty weak, and we do expect a uh, medium-term decline in prices over the next two to three years. Um, I do think that the price of gold has reached its low for the year um, oh, really? in late June, but I do expect that we could see another uh, few bouts of declines over the next So maybe uh, still testing the 1200 per ounce level? Yeah, the only reason I, I believe that prices have reached their lows for the year is that this quarter we have a lot of seasonal strength mm -hmm. in demand. So you have the wedding seasons in China and India, um, the national holiday in China. Um, so that provides a lot of uh, buying activity on the physical side. So we think that will buoy price, uh, prices but not really bring them up very far. So you, now you're saying, you know, you're seeing a pullback in demand and interest for gold, but hasn't that been ongoing now for a couple of years? I mean, we, we've come down, a, is it is it still, you know, at the level it was, let's say, a year ago, or is it tapering off? Yeah, so um, we saw prices peak in 2011, and 2012 was kind of like this uh, limbo period. And then this year, we really saw prices kind of come off to where we had expected them to be. Um, we were actually projecting prices to come off a lot um, further in 2012, that didn't happen, and it kind of just all spilled over into this year. Mm -hmm. um, that said, we do think that a lot of the um, decline has been met, but we do see some weakness because of some of the shifts in fundamentals. Um, so you're getting a lot of supply coming on stream over the next few years after very aggressive development of projects um, over the past uh five to seven years. So it's, it's actually starting to first come on now. Right? Yes, yeah, so now you have all this supply that needs to be absorbed by the market. So um, it's not necessarily going to be absorbed by industry. Uh, jewelry manufacturers, yes, they will buy up a little bit more um, gold and silver because of the lower prices. Uh, so that's an incentive. It kind of buoys uh, the um, the downside, really. Um, but uh, overall, it's really about investment demand, and that is where we're seeing the weakness. Investors are commanding lower prices in order to get into the market um, going long, and there's more of an incentive to go short just because um, the prospects, the factors that drive investor demand uh, have kind of dissipated. Yeah, how about the, exactly, like the, the, the people or the investors who got involved based on this outlook of crazy inflation, even hyperinflation because of the so-called central bank money printing and that never happened, right? Yeah. Now, is, is, is that still a, a sort of a core element uh, of investors who need to maybe get washed out before we could see yeah. a real bottom? Um, I mean, there's a portion of investors that are still buying gold convinced that inflation is going to skyrocket. Um, it's really more about inflation expectations mm -hmm. uh, rather than the real... Uh, inflation picture. And right now, inflation expectations are low because inflation has come off in the emerging countries. Uh, inflation in developed countries are very low. Um, and right now, the expectation really isn't there. So um, we can expect that that can change mm -hmm. uh, over the next several years. But I think that central banks, especially in the developed countries where a lot of the monetary easing has been going on, um, I think they have the tools and are capable of being able to stop up that inflation. I, I think that it can be managed. Right. Um, but that said, it's really not about the reality. It's about the expectations. Expectation. So it's, if investors... You've got to be a psychologist, yeah. right? <laughs> All right. So uh, on that note, Let's uh, be, put our psychologist hats on and talk about silver. What's the uh, silver outlook? Uh, well, I'm actually the most bearish on the silver market. Really? Uh, because silver has... Um uh, it has dual it has a very dual nature. So it's bought by investors as a financial asset, similar to gold. It's a hedge against uh, currency fluctuations, inflation, a safe haven. But it's also bought for its industrial traits. So during uh, cyclically strong periods of economic growth, you'll see silver uh, fabrication demand rising, mm -hmm. um, mostly from its uh, electronic uses, um, catalyst uses, um, raising alloys, solders. Uh, that's kind of goes with the housing market. 
Um, so during those periods, investors will buy on capital appreciation. But investors will also buy for similar reasons to gold, um, you know, to add to their portfolios right. as, as a diversifier and stuff. And um, none of the, neither of those factors are really at play right now. Um, in uh, in terms of an industrial asset, we do expect demand to be very weak and um, in some categories to even decline. For example, electronics demand we expect to decline. Um, and that is really? because, yes, uh, so slower growth in, elect um, in the economy, slower industrial production, and also um, another factor that's at play for electronics demand is the shift in consumer demand away from computers and toward tablets. Oh, that's a great point, yeah. Yeah, so that shift is expected to take place over the next three to four years. you're using less silver in those uh, smaller devices. Yeah, so um, there's about a tenth of the amount of precious metals in tablets than there are in computers. That much difference? Yeah, now oh, okay. uh, I should preface this with the computers only account for about five to ten percent of electronics demand for silver but it's still pretty important it's mm -hmm. been a growth factor for several years it's been computer demand's been rising for a very long time and this is one of the first uh, uh, years in which you're seeing declines in that market so it is uh, in my opinion significant although it's not gonna have too um, devastating of an effect. <laughs> well, okay, so let's put a number on it. Do you have a downside target given these uh, fundamentals? Um, so for silver, I uh, do believe that the lows have been reached this year of $18 um, dollars, uh, in late June. But um, I do see that prices could come off toward 20 maybe 1950 by the end of the year. Um, and then over the next several years, I think that they could um, head back toward 18 possibly 17. So basically, we were probably looking at some kind of a trading range in, in these lower price levels, sort of? Yeah, I think um, for the rest of the year, we're going to see that prices will be somewhat range-bound because you have that seasonal um, uptick in physical demand, which will help uh, support prices. But once prices reach certain objectives, I think that you're going to see profit-taking pretty quickly. Um, and then you have some of those factors that were driving the markets the past few months, um, the Syria issues, that's kind of largely blown right, over. Right. That was pretty much It's calmed August. down a bit, right? Yeah. Um, and we then don't you know. It could pop back up, but for now it looks like yeah. uh, a non-issue. Yeah. And then you had a lot of uh, investor expectations for a reduction in the monthly asset purchasing program um, by the Fed. Right. Uh, that was widely expected to be announced uh, in September, and it you know, there was no right, change, obviously. Right. Um, and I, I am of the opinion that there won't be a change this year um, because there's, there are defined objectives in which the Fed wants to reach before they shift um, their stance. So you think market expectations kind of got ahead of itself? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, what about platinum group metals? Do they sort of follow the same fundamentals, or are we talking about a, you know, a completely different set of fundamentals there? Um, well, the PGMs will... Uh, kind of move along with gold and silver because of the investment component, but they are mostly industrial metals. So they will move more along the trends of the economy and their specific fundamentals that drive them. So, um, Does that suggest a little bit of sluggishness now because uh, weaker economic growth? Yeah, so right now um, there's cyclical weakness in demand for the um, PGMs, particularly platinum. Um, less so palladium because palladium is dominated by U.S. demand, Chinese demand, and those markets are actually pretty uh, um, strong this year in terms of the um, auto market. But um, what I'm thinking is that uh, what I'm looking at is I'm targeting platinum as a uh, potentially... Uh, promising buy for right now because okay. there's only one real factor in the platinum market that is weighing on prices and that is European auto demand. So European auto demand has been declining past several years. Um, this year has been particularly bad because German, uh, the German auto market has uh, come off and that's the first time in, uh, uh, it was up last year and so that was a positive for the auto market in Europe but now it's uh, kind of weighing even further. Uh, that said, I do think that the European auto auto market could improve, um, not for the rest of this year, but maybe next year. And since that's the only factor really weighing on platinum, um, because there are a lot of other positive factors for platinum, I think that once that turns around, you could see a lot of upside. All right, so summing it all up, it looks like a little bit uh, of, you know, more of a challenging environment, let's say, for gold and silver for the next couple of years. Yeah. Platinum's probably your best bet. 
that's what I'm thinking, yeah. All right, Erica. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Thanks. That's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman saying see you next time. Bye-bye.